this is a slide that I have that I used for for uh, last year's ESOC presentation actually. So clonal hematopoiesis of indeterminate potential, also called CHIP, has recently gained interest as a risk factor for atherosclerosis, for cardiovascular disease, and for stroke. And what is this actually? So in young people, um, if you look at peripheral blood, then um, peripheral blood leukocytes, uh, that are the only uh, cells that have actually DNA in the peripheral blood, uh, if you analyze their genome, then you probably wouldn't find any somatic mutations in them because the hematopoietic stem and precursor cells that are in the bone marrow, um, uh, they are very heterogeneous population and um, they are each of them is contributing a little bit to the peripheral blood. But as we grow older, some of these hematopoietic cells accumulate somatic mutations that give them a growth advantage. And now we have a few cells, maybe only one precursor cell, um, that uh, is responsible for a quite substantial proportion of peripheral blood leukocytes. So um, in middle age, this is becoming more and more normal. And um, in older people, actually, this is quite common. So up to 30% of elderly uh, people in the general population have some amount of CHIP. Uh, can be quite substantial that up to 50-60% of, of peripheral blood leukocytes are coming from one clone. And um, all these people have normal blood count. They have no signs or symptoms of hematologic disorder. Um, and using uh, next generation sequence, we can uh, we can identify these mutations. And what we have seen from the general population is that um, these people that have CHIP have a twofold increased risk for myocardial infarction or stroke. And this is quite substantial um, depending on the baseline, on, on the individual baseline risk. But uh, twofold increased risk could be uh, huge. Um, they have also a tenfold increased risk for hematologic malignancy. Um, which sounds a lot, but actually is uh, quite a, a low risk of uh, low absolute risk of one to two percent a year. Um, and so chip is in, so now chip is associated with um, with uh, myocardial infarction or stroke uh, in the general population. So we wanted to uh, investigate the yield of myeloid genetic screening in young stroke patients. Uh, we wanted to know what is the prevalence of chip and what is the prevalence of undiagnosed hematologic disorders. And the background is that um, in young patients, actually um, up to 40%, in up to 40% of, of stroke patients under 60, we don't find a cause for the stroke, um, even though we check them very carefully. Uh, we do a lot of diagnostics, but we don't find anything. And usually we don't look for hematologic disorders. So, um, we built a cohort of 251 patients under 60 years with stroke or transient ischemic attack. They were uh, had a median age of 51 years, 40% of them were female, and 50% of them had cryptogenic etiology, meaning that we did a lot of diagnostics, we didn't find anything. And of course, if you have a patient with a stroke that is unexplained, then you cannot treat the cause, and uh, this could mean that they have a higher recurrence. And we did targeted gene sequencing of 41 genes uh, that are recurrently mutated in myeloid neoplasms, so that we commonly found in hematologic uh, disorders with a variant allele frequency of more than 1%, meaning that at least 2% of peripheral blood cells are um, harbor this mutation. So we found um, a quite high prevalence of 21% in our collective. So 21% had chip. Um, the prevalence of CHIP rose with age and compared with the general population, uh, after we have adjusted for method specific differences, we found a three to four fold uh, increased prevalence. And um, next, so we identified these 51 patients with CHIP. And um, interesting en interestingly enough, in our cohort already, three patients out of 251 had a uh, myeloproliferative neoplasm, and this is already a uh, tenfold higher prevalence than in the general population. And But out of these uh, 51 patients with CHIP, we um, stratified them into high and low risk, and um, according to, to uh, consensus papers on CHIP. And so 11 had uh, high risk CHIP, 
and they're recommended for further evaluation. So we call them and ask them to come uh, and, and get a hematologic follow-up. And um, uh, we actually got nine of them. And out of these nine, two actually had undiagnosed yet manifest myeloproliferative neoplasm and uh, I got a recommendation of cytoreductive therapy. So we found actually in two patients, I mean, it's, it's a low number, but still we identified two young patients under 60 years with a stroke um, uh, and a, a cause that was only found because of our study. And uh, there was a change in management. And for the other seven, uh, they didn't have an indication for, for cytoreductive therapy, but they have hematologic monitoring regularly. And uh, we try to manage the risk factors um, as well as possible. And uh, the interesting thing is that CHIP, we know, so there are consensus papers about CHIP and the hematologists um, for the general population they recommend their no treatment, rather monitoring for high risk CHIP. But in this case, these patients already had a stroke and we don't really know how to best treat CHIP in the context of stroke. So it could be that for some of these patients, CHIP was actually responsible for the stroke. We don't know that. Um, uh, the numbers are way too low, and um, but uh, hopefully there will be trials that try secondary prevention for, for CHIP in terms of um, cardiovascular and hematologic management.